Hey everyone, it's me again, just trying to figure out where we're at and what we're doing. And so I had a couple of thoughts today and then I also want to give you uh, some updates or guidance on what we're doing as a church and how we're moving. And uh, so let's start with uh, a couple of things that have been on my heart and on my mind. I've had a, uh, I've been on social media probably too much lately and I'm watching all the back and forth going on, and I actually watched a couple of my friends have a very important discussion that I think is helpful for us and how we feel, how we view and how we feel about this particular situation on being stuck doing things in a digital video world for right now. And I have to admit that this has been a stress environment for me as well. My wife may or may not have seen a, uh, phone go flying across the living room the other day yesterday may or may not have I can neither confirm nor deny but it's been a high stress environment for me as well and trying to get things done I got equipment that I need but I can't get and it's just been one of those one of those weeks where it's just not been going well so but I had this these friends that were in this conversation I have one friend who um, has a disabled child who has a very compromised immune system I have another friend who happens to be a pastor and his and so um, they were having a discussion on on Facebook recently about whether or not this idea of meeting virtually or digitally is a good thing to consider for long periods of time. You know, one person that thinks that, you know, it's not necessarily that big of a deal. Like we're just doing things a little different than we used to do, but we're still meeting together. And then the other friend would sit there and say, well, no, that um, the meeting together physically is necessary, at least from what we understand of scripture. And I want to speak to that a little bit, because I think sometimes we talk past each other and we don't actually um, listen to each other. So on the one hand, I want to say that there is always going to be exceptions to the rule. And if there are people who have family members that being around other people puts their lives in danger, I would say that the Lord understands and the Lord would encourage you to not put them around other people and to get the fellowship of the saints in whatever way that you can at that point. Now, I would caution you that you still need, you personally still need physical interaction with people or design that way. Um, on the other hand, I would also say this, that we cannot get away from what the scripture seems to not only directly state, but even imply um, as far as the importance of meeting together. We've talked about it a little bit in a couple of other videos. You know, Hebrews 10.25 says, don't neglect the meeting together as some people do. That's a very explicit statement. We cannot neglect that. Now, can we, in times of, of, uh, in times of distress, can we alter that to meet the need for right then? I think that the scripture does give us some leeway to do that. But here's the kicker. This should not become normative. And I want to talk to you about another aspect of this that I, that I think is important. In the New Testament church, oftentimes, it was to someone's physical peril. They would get executed if they were caught with Christian people in gatherings. But that did not keep them from meeting together. Now, what does that mean for us? That means that the meeting together of the saints was so important to the New Testament church, it was worth risking their lives for, worth the persecution and even execution of their own physical lives for the meeting together of the saints. So what does that mean? That means they thought it was very, very uber important to meet together with the saints. That was something that they thought was important to the point that they would go out in public and go into houses and meet secretly, but meeting together was important. That fellowship of meeting together was important. I heard a very interesting analogy today uh, by a very important, very uh, knowledgeable man by the name of Albert Moeller. Albert Moeller is the president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. And uh, he said this, he said, imagine going to a movie theater. 
You're going to the movies. Now, most people prefer to go to a movie in a movie theater than watch it at home. Well, what's different at the movie theater than at home? Well, I mean, you have popcorn, but you can get popcorn and make good popcorn at home. That's not the issue. You can buy candy. That's not the issue. I drink way more soda than I should be, so getting soda is not the issue. What's the issue? Big screen? Well, most of us have pretty big screens, bigger than our eyes can really see anyway. So what's the deal? The deal is there's a shared emotional experience that when you are with people, you get scared together, you laugh together, you gasp together. There's a shared emotional experience in going to the movie theater and being physically with people than there is just sitting in front of a screen. And I would submit to you the same is true when it comes to church. For right now, can we do this in a way where you can see church on a screen? Yes, we can. But we miss certain things. We miss certain aspects of humanity digitally. You cannot have a shared emotional experience, or at least it's very diminished emotional experience, by meeting over a screen. There's something about the corporate worship of God together for our experience. Now, God hears those in unison, and he accepts those praises in unison, but there's something for our benefit in being together and hearing each other sing and lift up worship. There's something to be said about that, and we'll look at Acts chapter 2 in our next video, but understand that the New Testament church thought it was very, very important, even to risk death, to make sure that they met together. So I still want to encourage you, do not let this in our live stream meeting church services become the norm for you. Let's do them as long as we have to, but let's be excited to meet together again. All right, with that being said, I got a couple of announcements we need to make. Uh, number one, they have here in South Dakota, they have decided to close schools all the way through the 1st of May. And it has been our policy that when school closes, that, that we would not have service as well, and we will continue that. So until the 1st of May, we will not have any Wednesday night services here at Big Springs Baptist Church. Now, what that means for kids, unfortunately, is that we will have to start our summer break for a certain, for lack of a better word, early, um, because we would normally be done with uh, Wednesday night services on the last week of April. Now, that being said, we still want to keep Wednesday, May 6th, that's the first Wednesday in May, we want to keep that open in hopes that we can meet together, and we want that to be a, a celebration of coming back together and um, uh, with our kids and celebrate what we did this year and what the Lord's brought us through in the last couple of months. So please keep May 6th open if you're a parent of small children. Uh, and plan on coming to that because we want to make that a pretty big deal if we can. Um, we will not have adult services on Wednesday nights, um, at least here at Big Springs. I am actually working on using Zoom, a digital platform, to do some Bible studies um, on Wednesday nights. I'll have more information on that going out as we figure out who's willing and wanting to be a part of that and also who has the technical capabilities of being able to do that. Um, and with that, um, I would also like to, on those Wednesday nights, those Bible studies, it's a lot easier on Zoom to do more of a collaborative study. Um, so I, I would much rather do something where we can have a discussion than have me just give another Bible study lesson. So that being said, um, if you can, comment down below on, on the Facebook page or send me an email or a text message or something. Let me know, maybe, do you have some questions about Christianity you've always wanted answered? Um, do you have uh, some, some stuff that you really wish people would cover and just haven't covered? Um, do you have a particular subject, whether it be um, eternal security or whether it be reformation or whatever, you know, just is there something that you want to study you'd like to take a look at and uh, send those to me and I might start putting some of those together in, in discussions that we can have to be able to really do this in a way that, that seems to, to help people along the way. So um, for Wednesday nights, we're gonna move to a digital format on Zoom and let's, uh, let's start and see if we can't throw some topics together that we, can, uh, that we can all kind of sink our teeth into. All right, number two, um, unfortunately this Sunday, 
uh, we will again be um, going live and uh, doing it digitally. We'll not have people in the building. So that being said, we'll go to the same spot. It'll be uh, www.bigspringschurch.org and right on the front page will be the live stream. Just go there, click on it. We have fixed the quiet sound issue. So, um, so that you'll be able to hear a lot better without turning it all the way up. And then also, uh, I just wanted you to know, I've been under the weather um, <clears throat> Tuesday night, running a low grade fever, um, pretty nasty chest cold stuff. I am really not up to trying to record music at this particular point. So we will be doing worship over YouTube videos. So please uh, um, be understanding of that. We're doing the best we can with what we have. And, and so um, we'll be doing um, a couple of songs over videos, but um, we will not have uh, me and Lily and Malachi playing and singing. So please be understanding of that. Um, and then lastly, I want to talk about April 5th. April 5th would normally be our communion Sunday. My guess is we're going to have to do live service on April 5th as well. Do it live as in live on the internet, not live here in the, in the building. So that being said, I still want to do communion. So if you can, I would encourage you to, by April 5th, have some sort of grape juice or juice of some sort and then also um, some bread of some sort, whether that be a cracker, whether that be a loaf of bread, I don't really care what it is, something that you can look at as a representation of the body, the blood of Jesus Christ, and we're going to take communion together, because that's one of the things that I think we're missing the most when we can't meet together, are those ordinances that the Lord has given us for sure that we should do, and communion is one of those, that, that he has commanded us that as long as we do this, we do in remembrance of him. So um, if we can, uh, please have that ready. If you can't have some of that, please let me know and we will figure out a way to get something to you because uh, we all want to participate in communion together. So with that, again, um, don't hesitate to call. Don't hesitate to text, to email, do whatever you need, but um, hang in there. We're, we're doing the best we can and we'll get through this because the Lord's on our side. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.